for more on this. Let's bring in Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. He joins us live and direct from Sydney. Mark, hello to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, really, we're already seeing that pound sterling moves shifting into this new trading week and pressure expected to mount on the UK currency with the UK PM expected to push for that hard Brexit. Yeah, good morning, Natalie. I think, you know, that hard Brexit certainly has been firming. If you read the uh, the press over the weekend in the UK, um, she does do have that speech on Tuesday where she's expected to flesh out in, a, in considerable detail the UK plans uh, ahead of uh, any uh, uh, formal triggering of that Article 50. You know, as John Noonan rightly pointed out, that certainly looks like it's going to be hard Brexit. That's what she's been talking about. But I think, you know, the investors and the market more broadly has been expecting maybe some softening at the edges because we haven't seen any detail. But that certainly doesn't look like the case. And as uh, John pointed out there in, in the package, you know, it will have impacts on, uh, on the UK economy, especially if you think about the financial sector. You know, there's a lot of uh, um, U.S. banks that are headquartered in London for the whole European operations, and they would potentially have to look to move elsewhere. Um, you know, there's been speculation that uh, some banks have been planning to maybe move to Dublin, um, you know, or even into continental Europe as well, Frankfurt and uh, and Paris and Amsterdam. But you know, probably you know, none of those options are really particularly uh, appealing to those uh, uh, London-based bankers at the moment. So there's going to be a major impact. And as you rightly say, in terms of Sterling. We have seen pressure on that. It's dropped down now below that uh, $1.20 mark. Um, and, you know, I think that's going to be almost a three-month low. And as John highlighted there as well, you know, in terms of the inflation, the, the UK inflation, you know, it's probably going to be higher because you're seeing that weaker sterling, the import price pressure. And in terms of the read that we get on inflation on Tuesday as well, we have um, CPI. Uh, core and headline is expected to be 1.4%. Um, core is already at 1.3%, uh, which is, uh, you you know, the highest that we've seen in around about three years. So there's an impact that we're seeing there, and that leads on to the Bank of England and Mark Carney. You know, it's a very difficult balancing act that he's going to have to manage in terms of potential impacts on the UK economy, you know, potential impact of, of uh, some of the financial institutions pulling out, yet maybe he's going to have to deal with higher inflation. So, you know, the economists seem to be agreeing that the next move in the UK is going to be higher. But the, the consensus among economists is that there's going to be no move in rates until 2019, so well into the future because of the, the fine balancing act that the Bank of England is going to have to manage. Just on that note, it's been suggestion, suggested that higher inflation the UK economy can absorb, but the greater risk is, in fact, if we then see stagflation. Would you agree? Oh, I mean, if you start to see stagflation, then that's obviously going to be a big issue in any economy, and that's and that's the fear from from the central banks, and that's why you're seeing you know the ECB and to a lesser extent the Bank of England continuing on their QE because they don't want to see uh, you know the uh, that low inflation becoming high inflation in, in a weak economy. So they're still trying to you know have weaker monetary policy to tr still try to generate uh, GDP growth and jobs growth as well, so you don't have a recession while you still having higher inflation. The UK economy, is, the way that I think of it, has is, is always been a bit of a, a canary in the coal mine in terms of uh, inflation. The UK economy, for whatever reason, maybe because it's, it's uh, considerably more open than a lot of economies in the world, uh, always gives you a, a, a really good insight in terms of inflation. The UK economy has always been susceptible to inflation from the, from the 60s onwards, um, you know, in terms of the oil price, and we've seen various spikes in inflation that maybe other economies haven't. So I always actually keep a very close watch on the UK inflation rate because I think it's a, a good leading indicator for potentially what can happen on a, a more broader global basis. We saw the recovery in the Treasury market coming to an abrupt halt on Friday. Mark, obviously the week ahead in the US is of particular importance. We have not only uh, comments coming through from US Fed Chair Janet Yellen, but also naturally uh, the inauguration of U.S. President-elect Donald Trump. We are hopeful of getting more indicators in terms of fiscal policy over the next couple of days, particularly following that, that disappointing formal press conference last week. But what is the outlook for the Treasury's market here with all of this in play? 
Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of dynamics going into that uh, Treasury market, as you rightly say. And, you know, it was disappointing in terms of that press conference, in terms of, I, I think, in terms of the content that was so severely lacking in terms of his plans for any kind of corporate tax cuts or fiscal spending. There was very little outlined. And also the fact that he, you know, he seems to be still a very, very loose cannon. So I think you're going to see a lot more volatility in the market. And if you get more volatility, you probably see people looking to reduce their uh, their risk exposure overall in terms of their portfolios. So that typically will mean that they'll be looking to buy more U.S. Treasuries. And then also you have the impact of potentially who are those whole large holders of the U.S. Treasuries. Offshore, you've got China. You know, is, is Trump going to annoy the Chinese uh, authorities over there? Are they going to start to selling uh, the Treasuries as well? Um, and then also in terms of the you know the inflation expectations because of fiscal spend you know the market is positioning for that in terms of you know higher yield curves and probably a steeper yield curve as well and if that inflation doesn't come through because for whatever reason the fiscal spending doesn't come through as expected then you may not see that steepness so there's a lot of factors going on so what should investors do I mean at the moment I, my, my, my preference is to be very defensive because I think volatility is going to be uh, very high for the next uh, couple of months because I don't think anybody, even probably Donald Trump, has any idea what he's going to do actually once he becomes uh, president and, and once in terms of the plans and how it all goes through and actually works its way through the system. So I would position more defensively in terms of credit quality and also in terms of duration along the curve. I prefer the shorter dated bonds to the longer dated bonds because I don't think that steepening and the, the backup in yields uh, has finished and so I'd position the portfolios more defensively. Mark, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Natalie. Have a good one. Coming up on Market Countdown, it's shaping up to be a bumper week on the 